You will not get a way, Mr. Bond. Rallies the winner chopping robots. Wow, what a fun sketch, but none of that was editing tricks. I actually programmed my house to do that. Hi, I'm Noah Smith, and today we'll be entering the world of home automation. Let's dive in. Never DIY something that you can buy. Anyway, today we'll be DIYing smart lights. Has this ever happened to you? Hey, wiretap, turn off the light. Then boy, do I have a solution for you. Dangerous circuitry. For the type of person that values being alive, your first thought is probably smart light bulbs. I didn't go down that route because they're relatively expensive. The cheapest one I can find is about $5 for one. The average house has 45 light bulbs installed. But there's no reason each bulb needs to be smart. All we need is a smart light switch. Well, that's going to cost at least $15 per switch. That's still a few hundred dollars for a whole house. Is there a cheaper option for a smart light switch? If I were an internet forum, I would tell you to Google it, and you would be like, I did, Google brought me here. It would have taken you just as much time to answer the question as it did to post a snarky remark, and the world is worse off because of your actions. The $5 zone off basic. Plenty of internet support, easy to wire, easy to program. And that is the correct answer. But why spend $5 when you could spend this many? That was $4. Before we get into the design of the light switch itself, let me explain what the end goal is, besides ad revenue. I want to put an end to three ways in this household. Yes, three-way light switches. When there are two light switches controlling a single light, it always ends up being that the switch on one end has to be flipped down in order to turn the light on. Just like a teenage jock on Xbox, it's maddening. Do you like our three ways? Our? Three-way lights. What did you mean? Also, sometimes I have to walk to multiple light switches to light up an entire room. We're going to change switches to momentary buttons and tie them to home automation software so any light switch or light button can control any light in the house and also be controlled by voice via Google Nest. There's going to be a dozen light buttons around the house. They don't communicate with each other directly. Rather, they communicate with a hub. The software for that hub will be Home Assistant. This is pretty powerful open source software that can control nearly anything that connects to your home's Wi-Fi. If you want to set your Roomba to run every time your TV turns on, this is the software you'd use. The hardware we'll be installing Home Assistant on is a Raspberry Pi. Usually setting up a Raspberry Pi requires a little bit of Linux terminal knowledge, but setting this up for Home Assistant was literally plug and play. To show how easy it was, I'm going to have my not-so-technical wife demonstrate. How would you rate your technical ability? Pretty good with email. Do you know what this is? It's a Raspberry Pi, and judging by the micro HDMI ports on the side, I'd say a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Take an SD card and insert it into your computer. Download the Home Assistant image from their website. Using that image and Bolina Etcher, flash the SD card. Insert the SD card into the Pi. You'll need an Ethernet cord to connect the Pi to your router. To enter hacker mode, be sure to snap off the security tab. Plug in the Pi to power and to your router, and you're done with the hub. Now we're ready to make that $4 smart light button. I had grand ambitions to fully design a PCB that integrated an ESP8266, a relay, and a 120 volt to 5 volt converter, but after stumbling upon these modules on AliExpress, it was just too darn cheap to use anything else. This video is now 0% electrical engineering and 100% comedy. What's the deal with airline food? No, really, it's 2021. I haven't been on an airplane this decade. Do they still have free pretzels? You'll need an ESP8266 to connect to the Wi-Fi, a relay to switch the lights, a button, and a power supply for the microcontroller, and a bunch of tools I'll forget to mention. If you came here to learn something, you're going to be sorely disappointed. This relay module adds a lot of quality of life to the installation. It regulates the voltage for the ESP8266 and adds terminal blocks for easy wiring. Simply insert the microcontroller into the module. I soldered a momentary button directly to GPIO2 and ground on the ESP8266. No pull-up resistor necessary. This needs a constant 5 volts DC. We could give it a battery, but batteries, much like the goldfish your little brother was responsible for feeding, die. Since we're shoving all of this into a light switch box with 120 volts available, we can use that high voltage for power. 
but we need to step that way down. That's where this comes in. This is what we call a switching regulator. I just need to, uh... Over the last couple of decades, switching regulators have become the go-to way to turn dangerous mains voltage into safe, lickable voltage. Because they're so darn small. For reference, here it is next to another switching regulator. If you were to stack five of these on top of each other, it would still only be half as tall as a picture of one blown up to ten times the size. These are actually the same kind of devices that are used in USB wall warts. But there's one key difference. Let's talk about safety. Your standard Earl Grey should be kept below 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, but real talk. You might be tempted to get a spin cast reel, but if you're serious about angling, you'll want a spinning reel. Seriously, though. High Voltage was the first album released by the band ACDC in the year 1970. I'm going to put on my serious hat for a sec. Do not use the switching regulator in any application where the user is not insulated by plastic housing. These are cheaply made things that will shock you. Trust me, I'm an engineer with a year of experience. Anyway, let's use this in an application where I'm not insulated by plastic housing. To make sure this power is on, we'll need access to 120 volts. The easiest way to do that is to find an old electrical cord. The hardware is done, now we need to plug it in. Okay, to prevent fire, we're gonna stick the whole circuit in water. I think the problem is we haven't installed any software yet. Remember hardware engineers, always blame the software engineers. I'm horrible at mechanical design, but this, is what I came up with for the case. The mounting plate isn't so bad. To give a thread for the light switch cover screws to attach to, insert number six nuts into the plastic plate. Insert the button into the hole. Insert the relay module with the button on bottom. Now we've got something pretty close to the original switch, but instead of a switch, it's a single button. One very important thing is I want this to act as a normal light switch even if the Wi-Fi goes out. Hey, I'm gonna reset the router. Fortunately, this functionality can be implemented using ESP Home. This is the software that we will program onto the ESP8266. Now it's time to open up the light switch cover. Remove the two screws. Inside, there will be three types of wire. Hot, neutral, and ground. The first thing you'll see is ground. It should be green, depending on the time of year. Next is... neutral. It's alright. One of its defining features is how white it is. You can touch it. And like watching a documentary of atrocities taking place in a country you don't live in, feel nothing. And then there's hot. If you're touching this one, you're going to want... PROTECTION! <laughs> Unscrew the existing light switch. Unscrew the wires. If you feel pain right now, it's because you forgot to turn off the breaker. There might be back wire in the switch. Just cut that off. I'm replacing wire nuts with Wago connectors, because it's way easier to connect wires with these things. I don't know NEC standards. This channel isn't called Noah Smith Obeys the Electrical Code. The best way to learn how to do something correctly is to post a video on the internet of you doing it poorly. So for the latest NEC regulations, check the comments. This requires a neutral wire, so if your house is old enough to not have one, it doesn't matter because you shouldn't be trying this anyway. 
please don't try to do anything in this video. If you die following along with a video that features phallic electrical wire, it's a Darwin Award. All right, the whole house is set up. Let's do some memes. Hey, Wiretap, turn on the basement light. Wow, that is lit fam. Get it, lit? Like a light bulb? It's a pun. Seems the lights are trying to escape. Okay, wiretap. Kill the lights. The lights are no more camry. Hey, wiretap. Use the lights to add two and one. Two plus one equals. Noah, I swear if you give me a seizure while I'm on the toilet. Hey, Wiretap, what about two plus two? Two plus two equals. In Home Assistant, once you've pulled in all the lights in the house, you can set up a sequence of actions to perform when a certain event happens. Those actions could be flashing the lights, turning them on in any order, having Google Nest say stuff, having Google Nest say stuff in a funny accent, turning on your TV to play lewd content. The sky's the limit. The event to trigger could be time of day, a button press, but the most fun is a user saying a specific phrase to Google Nest. Hey, wiretap. Initiate sexy time. Okay, activating the sexy time. to keep the shenanigans in the basement. Hello, Noah. I see you're trying to show off to guests. Again. Let me help with that. Also, stop messing with the lights. And to bring a full circle, the hacker stick. This is an ESP8266 programmed with ESP Home, just like the light buttons. On Power On, Home Assistant is programmed to do whatever. Using a USB wall wart and the programmer, the ESP8266 powers on. Though it does take about 5 seconds to boot. J'adore le pupu. That's gonna do it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so my brain will give me dopamine. J'adore le pupu.